Hey YouTube, today we're going to photograph a product with a single speed light. I'm going to share a workflow for compositing something like this. Fairly easy actually, with just a few exposures and some digital enhancements. So things I want to touch on today, getting this nice shimmer across the label. I think that's a lovely final touch. It's really classy. Secondly, I want to focus on the general nature of how this product's just kind of glowing. Like we're really breathing life into every angle. Keep in mind, this is a one light setup. And we're going to do an optional drop shadow, which is just a very pleasant option to hand to a client. So essentially we're building the actual schemes that would accompany say these TV boxes, but we're taking it out of the proper studio setting and opting for something a lot more minimal. So you might be asking what the heck's going on over here. This is just a really simple black card with a line of sight cut out to the camera. Normally I'd use a more manageable background you've seen me use, though just out of principle I'm gonna use this. I'm all about utility and it does everything it needs to do. It has a line of sight to the lens. And we're gonna take advantage of that with one of these $10 diffusion discs and a speed light, pretty much creating a white background. And I have a histogram open, so let me take a look at this. Okay, this looks really lovely. So it almost looks like a great keyed frame. So what we could do from here is make a really crude selection around the item. And that can be really crude, even with a soft feather. And then once you invert it, you've now isolated the white areas and with a simple white fill now, we've created a nice base frame that we'll composite onto in the future. Okay, let's proceed here and take a few detail shots just with the same lighting system. I'm gonna kinda try to make the top of this glow because I think that could look kinda elegant. So that's this one light, and that looks oddly sophisticated for one light, I will say. I love the way the logo is sort of playing there, though certain areas certainly look underwhelming. So let's bring this image as our base frame and we'll add that on lighten mode. And that's where we can really begin to avoid these unidirectional looks and start to build, you know, multi-directional images that, you know, breathe a lot of life into the end result. So let's set this as our base frame and I'm gonna tether to you on lighten mode and we'll add a little detail shot, maybe at the front of the image. Interesting, so. There it is on lighten without lighten, and there's the raw capture itself. So you can begin to acutely light areas, and that's a really strong approach. So not that this is, you know, the perfect finished product here with the lighten modes added. I just want to illustrate the point and more so the mindset that we approach this from. Okay, so I'm going to stop broadcasting to you on lighten mode now and just take a ton of shots. And when we're in the editing room, in the comfort of the editing room, we can really analyze these. But hope you guys enjoy just seeing them come up here, and I'll try a variety of angles. And even though the backgrounds are completely sporadic, nothing is brighter than white. So when we apply that light mode, we don't have to worry about any of that. It's gonna completely keyed out. We'll focus on the sides here a bit. Now I'm not gonna use all these exposures. I'd be crazy to do that. So we have a few strong options here and I'll enjoy including the post at the end of this episode. Now this episode is single speed light compositing and digital enhancements. So what is digital here about our final image? What can we take care of? Well this little gradient, this little apple, you know, shimmer on the gloss, we could easily take care of that in post-production and that's how I prefer to do that. You could certainly get that in camera, just follow the angle of incidence and have a nice hard reflection behind it. Though I'll show you how we take care of that in Photoshop in a moment. Acute areas like this, these gradients on the side, are certainly subject to being, you know, tightened up, made better in post-production, or completely artificially recreated. Though I will say, because our item is floating the way it is, we had a lot of access to getting at it at the sides. So folks, we're headed to post-production. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all there on the other side. Take it easy. Welcome. Welcome to the post-production element of this workflow. I'm excited you're here. So I shot this set of exposures with the proper background stand, but the exact same ideas apply. And when I imported this backlit frame, I applied a bit of contrast so that we're on pure white pixels here, which is really important because that'll make light mode become our best friend. So it's my base frame and it's a few fun shots that I just sort of light painted the item with like we just did. So starting with the backlight frame, let's make a new layer above it. 
hit L and I'll make a really crude selection around it. Having a solid silhouette is really the crux of this technique. You have to have a base frame and it has to be clean as a whistle. Now the reason we can make this selection crudely is because we're taking advantage of the floating nature of our product and you know it's swimming in catalog white so we might as well make that selection. Control Shift I to invert, Alt Delete to paste our foreground color which is white and Control D to deselect. And now we have like 90% of a silhouette. We have everything we possibly could without, you know, having to intervene manually like we're going to have to here. Now I see a bit of yellow haze here. Let's actually do a desaturation effect. That'll get rid of the chromatic aberration and any color cast in our item. So we need to manually get rid of this part of the selection. I'm going to advocate the pen tool for that because it really handles curves well. By dragging these nodes, we can really acutely you know, account for the curvature of our product and accurately select it. Now I probably should turn on these light modes to accurately see the edge, but I already did create a selection here, so we'll just go right along here for the sake of the video and show you what I would do. So I'd close that selection up, I'd open my paths dialog box, and if this doesn't present itself to you, it's hiding up here in the window tab, and control click to select the path. Now we could paste white like we did before, and that would work, but it'd be kind of a short-sighted solution. What I prefer to do is make a new layer, control G to group the layer, and with this selection present, make a layer mask using this button. So what this will do is it will make a selection, it'll make a mask out of the selection. So once white is in that grouping, it essentially did the same thing. You're allowing a white layer to exist in the confines of that selection, but it's kind of smart now because it's editable. I love preserving the editing capabilities when possible. Not only is it editable, we can go back and change this mask, but we have a feather dial here. When organic selections happen, you know, they're kind of like hazy by nature, even by like half a pixel. But when you artificially create selections, they're really straight, and sometimes it can look uh, too crisp. So by applying even half a pixel of feather, it just becomes a bit more organic, a bit easier to look at, especially when you're a little bit zoomed out. It sits nicely. So let's merge these together. And just like a cooking show, I already have a nice one here. So let me do a little switcheroo. And I spent a bit more time crafting this to you know, really respect the curve there at the front. So now we have a nice silhouette. And like I said, this will serve as the base of our entire project, which is really important. Now we have all of these layers here and everything's on light mode. So I'm gonna put my base mode on normal. And by putting these little you know, light paints on light mode, you essentially just turn a light switch on. So here's my base frame, here's my right, and I put some light over here on the left, and they're really gonna play well together, I think. The reason I chose this as my base frame over here is because we have a bit of front to back, you know, a direction of the lighting, and that gives the whole scheme a bit of movement and serves well as a sort of all-encompassing base. Then we skirted a bit of light here in the right and the left. So here's the left exposure. I think it's really nice. It's really low key, and you know, I did it from a low angle, but it plays really well with the base, and you can't even tell it's a composite. It looks really like a two-light setup, I think. Now the right exposure, some of it's a little sloppy, so what I'm gonna do is give it a layer mask and invert that layer mask, hit G to bring up my gradient, I'll set white as my foreground color, I'll do a radial gradient, and you know, just to wake this part of the product up over here, because it's looking kinda too dark, I'll hit G to bring up the gradient and just sort of skirt some light, and I'll try a few different shapes I'm not really trying to make this bright, but just it looks underwhelming when it's this dark. And by just doing a little something like that, you just wake that area up and give it a bit of life. And I think people appreciate that in an e-commerce setting. So not that this is knockout gorgeous lighting, but I think we've breathed life, like I said, into every angle of the product. And it's much more acceptable for e-commerce. And it's a decent basis to start off on. So why don't we start digitally augmenting this puppy? Let's make a new layer. I'm going to get my lasso tool, and we're going to add that sort of Apple techie shimmer to the logo here. So to do that, I'm going to make a crude selection. And please take more time in your selections than I do. I just, I really value people's time, even random people on the internet, and no one wants to wait through too long of a tutorial, so I try to stay speedy with the crude selections. Not that this selection needs to be like, you know, amazingly airtight. There's a bit of a wiggle room. 
nice and see I have this selection mode selected so I can just keep adding to that and it won't deselect and again I'll make a nice crude mask okay and you know I went a little too high there so I'll patch that up lovely and I'll just get over here nice now that's not perfect but let's keep moving here so just like before I'm gonna hit control G to group that and make that selection a layer mask so now anything that happens in this group is going to be contained to the parameters of the logo mask and I'll name that logo like if we painted white in here we would paint white where the logo is but that's not what we want we wanted to sort of cut through like a shimmer so you can hit L and in this layer within the grouping I'm gonna decide where I want that shimmer to exist so what angle here something like that and you'll notice I'm being very crude with the way I'm selecting this because we're within this group so it doesn't matter we can paste white and it'll only show up there does that make sense to everybody okay now this looks really fake because it's all one tone and that's not that good so we could lower the opacity sure but it's still gonna be sort of too linear so what we could do is actually give the group give this layer a group within the grouping then if we give it a mask we can sort of fade it out on the side so I'm gonna give it a black mask so it disappears and I'm just gonna do a white gradient and that'll sort of give more you know movement to the gradations like if I did it really extremely you'd see what this is doing here's a more subtle version just by having some movement there you're not allowing it to all be a uniform tone and it looks a little bit more believable and that's also kind of motivated by the front to back direction of the lighting you know in the whole scheme of things so I think that looks kind of cool we have a bit of a central radial gradient and that looks nice and there is a bit of a beveled nature to this so why don't I actually select that I'm gonna hit select modify contract I'm gonna shrink it by a pixel control shift I to invert that and then put black into the mask and that's just gonna shrink the selection and kind of make it respect the bevel a little bit more now it looks way too hard edged as well so I'm gonna go back into the feathering and that's you know another benefit of keeping everything editable tricky word to say editable half a pixel is decent now that selection work was a little sloppy but I think we're on the right track and I think you get you know how you would nail that with the proper amount of time so that's nice we lifted that area up digitally and that's great how about we add a little LED to the front here hey eh? use an elliptical marquee tool I'll make a kind of small selection paste white as my foreground oops I didn't make a new layer yet there we go paste white as the foreground deselect and I'm gonna shrink this to be pretty narrow so it looks nice and techy and control T to bring up those scaling properties and I'll just rotate it such that it's flush with the angles here something like that and I'll kind of you know, try to put that in the middle now that'll look really fake but it's just you know it's just information to work with that's what all this is including that you just give yourself information to work with and then you fine-tune it until it looks believable and it's, you know it's really through a fresh perspective in an e-commerce setting that people are gonna see this and they're not gonna see you know all the editing you did they're just gonna get the final result so that looks nice now what I'm gonna do is blur this just to create a bit of almost like a glowing light effect and it'll look kind of cheesy when it's just one light I'll agree but what we'll do is we'll keep it real subtle so what we can do is begin to duplicate these layers we can grow them we can shrink them we can adjust their opacities and just by creating multiple layers we kind of create depth within our light and have a more believable glow so let me just take a bit of time here to craft this until I think it looks half decent okay I don't think that's perfect but I think that serves the purpose that's actually how I recreated it in my final version and maybe I spent a few more layers just to make that all make sure that all blends together nicely but I actually think that looks decently strong so now we have something that may not be award-winning but you know it's acceptably illuminated for e-commerce and it's a good you know starting point for our editing so I'll merge everything together I won't even bother renaming these if you don't mind I'll merge everything together but first actually I'll duplicate this base frame 
I'll merge all this together. Now, if you're happy with pure white and you don't need a drop shadow, this may be perfect for you. You can shoot stuff without a shadow for e-commerce all day using a single speed light using this method. Pretty powerful. Now, if you want a bit more control or maybe you're interested in a drop shadow, let me show you a few techniques that you can employ. So I'm going to copy this base frame we created and let me show you another great use for it. We can give this grouping here a layer mask, alt click to view the mask and then paste the base frame in there. And that's kind of the antithesis of what we want. So we'll invert the mask. And now what we've done is pretty much use that silhouette to actually completely render out our item. And how beautiful is that? So let's bring in white as our foreground color here. That's really nice. And I'll duplicate that and I'll invert it. So we also have black. Okay, so let's hide this black layer and get some drop shadows going here. So let's control click our mask. And again, I'll make a new layer and I'll just paste black in this layer. And this is gonna actually act as our shadow essentially. So we'll bring that below our grouping and I'll also bring that slightly lower than our item just so we can see it. And let's hit control T and holding alt and shift. I'll just make that a little smaller and a little lower, maybe something like that. Nice, now I'm gonna make this really subtle and this will be you know, a fairly hard shadow with a hard edge. I will do filter blur and just do a pretty subtle blur. But we're gonna do this in combination with a more you know, blurred shadow and it's gonna inject a lot of realism. So we'll duplicate that and let's do a more serious blur. Something nice and blurry, kinda like that. And we don't want that to be completely visible, but let's blend it into a certain amount. And you know what, I'm gonna actually make the hard shadow even less visible. And the reason I do this two shadow method is just by having a hard shadow and a soft shadow, you just kind of inject a bit of realism by not allowing it to look really linear and simple. And it looks a little more complex and believable, I find. It actually looks kind of like it was lit uh, from the top with a soft box, which is how it could have been lit. In fact, the way we digitally augmented that, it kind of suggests that maybe that's how it was lit, to be honest. So I think that's looking half decent. But the nice part is because we created this mask, you know, we completely can have a drop shadow and not worry about it bleeding into our actual information. So that's at 9%, that's at 80%. Maybe I'll reduce that to 70. It's become a bit more subtle. And you know, you can tweak that to the high heavens, but I think that that looks half decent. So what I'll often do with a client is I'll deliver, you know, this shot and then I'll deliver this shot just to give them options. And that's a really beautiful thing because it makes your client feel like they have even more control. And it's just pleasant if you can quickly do that and just offer them, you know, an array of options. So speaking of options, and this is my favorite part about this technique, is let me turn on this black layer again and I'll reduce the opacity. And what you'll notice is by increasing the opacity of this black layer, I can actually begin to pull this into gray and just reveal to us that we're completely able to change the background color of our layer here just by changing the mix between black and white. We can put any color in the background. I find that's such a powerful technique that often gets glossed over because you can deliver this not just on pure white or pure black, but a really specific hue color, which is really important, especially if you're crafting hero images or cover photos or, you know, marketing ads where you need to have a really specific hue. That happens a lot. Well, this is completely a subject to that. Now, that's beautiful. Like, I love putting things on a flat gray when possible. It looks a little different, and I think it's a nice techie look. This is also completely open to having, like, completely insane colors. Like, let's do a crazy gradient just to illustrate a point here. Maybe something like that. So a linear gradient. I'll do foreground to background. And this is going to look nutty, so hold on to your horses. Ready? Whoa, that looks crazy. But the point is you're completely existing outside of your item with the simple selections we took. And that's a really powerful technique moving forward. So whether you want to deliver on gray or deliver on white, it's up to you. This is the image I threw together and I did this fairly quickly. Like I really don't think this is breathtaking, but I just unlocked so much potential by doing this myself that it was so exciting. I thought I'd just share this process with you so you can start to rebuild these kind of looks or you know, use these in your own e-commerce ventures. Make sure to like the video if this helped you. It's a beautiful way to help out the channel here and it really improves our SEO. So I appreciate you thumbing up the video. Check in back next week for what we're up to. I'm sure it'll be something very fun. And until then, I hope everyone has a great time. I'll see you all later. Take care, everybody.